Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Tracy Holmes. Sport Integrity Australia is poised to investigate claims of historical abuse within one of the country's most recognised sporting teams. Will this be a moment of truth for the Matildas? Coming up, we speak to Liz Ellis, who was part of a panel that conducted a 2019 review into football's national teams, and the co-CEO of Professional Footballers Australia, Bo Bush. Matilda's great Lisa Devanna came forward this week alleging she was bullied, sexually harassed and ostracised during her career. Speaking to News Corp papers, Devanna alleged grooming and bullying occurred inside the Matilda's camp. She said the abuse started when she was 17 in the young Matilda's squad, when a teammate allegedly pulled her down from behind and dry humped her. Football Australia says it met with Devanna in recent weeks, but these allegations were not raised. We asked Lisa Devanna for an interview. As of yet, we haven't heard back. The former international is Australia's second most capped player, having represented her country 150 times. Only weeks ago, she spoke to ESPN after being left out of the squad for the Tokyo Olympics. I don't think I can recover back from this journey anymore. Do you feel disappointed in how it's all ended? Yeah, of course. I'm heartbroken from it all. James Johnson is the CEO of Football Australia. James, Lisa Devanna makes serious allegations of grooming, bullying, harassment. Former W League player Riley Dobson has also talked about a toxic culture in women's football. How seriously is the FA taking those allegations? Well, we're, we're very concerned, Tracy, um, and we're, we're not only concerned about the seriousness of the allegations, um, we're concerned for, for, for Lisa and also for, for Riley. Um, these uh, specific allegations that were raised yesterday, they do date back several years ago, um, but the type of behaviour is really not um, what we would expect in our sport, nor should we expect in any other code or in society in general. Um, so we are uh, taking them very seriously and we will act very decisively. Have you spoken to Lisa or her lawyer or her manager since these allegations have been raised? Um, we, we have um, reached out for the purpose of, of making support available to them because this is it's obviously a very difficult time um, for Lisa and for Raleigh and we want to ensure um, in parallel with any investigation that's run um, that, uh, that they both have the right um, support and, and help um, put around them. So, yes, we have tried to, to make contact with both Lisa and Raleigh, Tracy. So for people who don't necessarily follow the ins and outs of the sport but are across the headlines, we've seen in 2019 a report from the Players Association, the PFA, talking of a toxic culture inside the Matildas camp. A coach lost his job months out from the 2019 World Cup and then the FA commissioned the independent review that you spoke about. Now these allegations from one of the country's most decorated players, what do you say to people who quite legitimately ask what is going on inside this team? Um, I think we just got to look at the, the, the facts, Tracy. In 2019, there was a independent review that was done um, on national team culture um, that was headed up um, by Di Diane Smith-Gander. It had Rod McGeoch and Liz Ellis um, as part of the panel that, that, that reviewed what Football Australia could do better to improve culture, to create um, a world-class high-performance environment. That report is available um, publicly, it's online. Um, and what I can tell you is that over the past 18 months since that report was issued, um, we, we, we've implemented about 75 to 80% of that report. That means there's a new coach, um, there's a new performance director, new national wellbeing manager, whistleblower policies. Um, uh, there, there, there's policies around rooming, uh, rooming requirements. Um, and you really have virtually a new team. Um, so you know, I think if that's not proof um, that, that things have changed since that report was issued in 2019, I'm really not sure what would be. Football Australia is not alone with allegations such as these being made. We've seen similar allegations in swimming and gymnastics, for example. What's your advice to other sports organisations who could potentially be facing similar allegations? Should the national sports framework offered by Sport Integrity Australia be the avenue they go down as well? Yes, is, is the short answer. Um, I think if any sport is not getting ahead on this issue, they're going to fall behind. So absolutely, this is the direction we'll be moving. Um, and again, it's really centred around our players who have done a lot for the sport, 
um, feel comfortable and are looked after, Tracy. James Johnson, thank you for your time. Thank you, Tracy. Bo Bush is the co-chief executive of Professional Footballers Australia. He joins us now. Bo, I know you've reached out to Lisa Devanna. Have you heard back from her yet? We'll continue to make sure for Lisa that all the full resources of the PFA are available to her. What's really important for us and for any member is that once someone joins the PFA, these resources are available both now and at any point in the future. Have any other Matildas ever come to the PFA with the very serious, in fact, criminal allegations of grooming inside the Matildas set up? No, not to the best of my knowledge. Um, Tracy, I've been at the PFA now for a significant amount of time. Um, what we do know about around the world in relation to incidents such as this, it can be very difficult to come forward. So what's absolutely vital for us is that if anybody has experienced uh, the allegations that Lisa has put forward, that they do reach out and that they do feel they will be supported by the PFA, we will be here for them. We will treat them incredibly seriously. And since those allegations have been made, have you heard from any other Matildas players, either past or current? We've reached out to all players. Um, we consistently want to make sure that every player is aware of what's available for them. So we'll continue to do that. Um, that's been the main priority, to make sure that they're aware of what reporting frameworks are currently in place for them if they would like to report. I want to ask you this, Bo. Back in 2019, a PFA survey found widespread allegations of uh, what the players thought was a toxic culture inside the Matildas camp. There were concerns that there was an element of um, homophobic behaviour. These latest allegations would appear to be almost the opposite. As you said, the PFA represents all players. Is there a division inside the Matildas camp based on sexuality or should we assume, as you would expect in most teams, that sexuality is actually irrelevant? Certainly not that I'm aware of. Has there been any division um, within the team? What we know is that in women's football um, that it has been an incredibly safe space for people and that's really fundamental at the moment, that people continue to feel safe in that environment. If they haven't felt safe, it's important that they come forward. But we certainly haven't known the Matildas to be a divisive environment where the players themselves have been disconnected from each other. We've known that they've, in all types of matters, ensured that they've had huge support from each other. So aside from reaching out, how vital is the role that the PFA will play from here? Because we know uh, when allegations like these are made, one of the biggest issues, we've seen it across many sports, it's not limited to, to football, uh, but we've seen that it's, it's issues of trust that keep being spoken about time and time again. And who exactly do people go for and how convinced can they be uh, that their privacy and sometimes anonymity will be respected? That's absolutely fundamental to us, Trace, that we need to make sure that the players trust us and can come forward to us. We need to make sure that sport's adopting a proactive approach. And that's absolutely fundamental to us. We can't wait till harm's occurred for change or reviews or those sort of things to occur. What's really at the heart of this is that we need to make sure that sport embeds human rights into all aspects of the sport, into its governance, into its decision making. If it's able to do that, then what we'll see is that people are constantly placed at the centre of all decisions made. That's absolutely vital. So whilst it's a welcome step to be able to see an increase governance and options around reporting for players that Football Australia has worked on with Sport Integrity Australia, we also need to make sure the sport goes to another level. And we need to make sure that we're proactively identifying risks and that we're stepping forward to identify those before harm has occurred. And when harm has occurred, we need to make sure that we're not just identifying it, but also importantly that players or others within the sport have got access to remedy as well. Bo Bush, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Trace. As we heard earlier, in 2019, Football Australia ordered a review into the management of the national football teams following the sensational sacking of then Matildas coach Alan Stajic just months out from the World Cup. Former Australian netball captain Liz Ellis was on the independent panel that conducted the review and she joins us now. Liz, what were your central findings, particularly with regard to the Matildas? I guess there are a couple of things that really came through um, in terms of our review. We were totally independent. 
the first thing was that we felt that in the, the management of the football of the FFA's national teams across the board, regardless of whether it was uh, men's or women's, junior or seniors, it was very coach centric. So a lot depended on the personality of the coach at the time. And we recommended a move to an athlete centricity in terms of their high performance. And that simply means putting the athlete at the centre of your decision making. So making sure that athletes uh, have enough resources to address wellbeing issues, uh, which this really, the latest sort of stuff really falls into. The other thing we uh, talked about a lot was establishing processes towards putting in place athlete centricity. So making sure that you had good processes in place for complaints, for communication to your athletes, for them to be able to lodge and register complaints, but also to put in place uh, good leadership groups within each team. So you know, when we did the review, the way that the FFA uh, appointed its captains of all its national teams what it, was that it was at the discretion of the national coach. And we felt that they needed to be uh, a little bit more comprehensive in how they did that and assume a bit of a risk profile just to make sure that the athletes who were named as leaders of the team had actually gone through some sort of vetting process and leadership training. And that, I think, really speaks to what we're seeing now in terms of you know, good leadership in sporting teams can often prevent this sort of behaviour that, um, you know, that Lisa Divana has revealed and um, has made allegations about. So our review really talked about athlete centricity and putting in place the right processes to achieve that. Was there any hint at any time about these most recent allegations from Lisa? No, there wasn't. And we were very mindful of the fact that there was some requirements um, on our shoulders when we were doing this. So if any allegations had been made, we would have had to think carefully about where we referred them to from a legal point of view, but nothing specifically was said to us. We weren't able to speak to any of the Matildas players and, and you can read into that what you like, but it probably speaks to the fact that, you know, um, over the years that the Matildas players um, really hadn't felt that there was communication or proper communication channels between them and the hierarchy of, of the FFA. So it's heartening to hear that the FFA are addressing that. But, you know, there's sort of hard communications channels that can be set up through processes, and we've seen a number of sports try to address that. We just heard about, you know, Sport Integrity Australia. But there's also got to be soft communication processes put in place because sometimes um, or these sort of allegations are incredibly personal and incredibly hurtful. And for an athlete to feel they have no option but to go to the media and be the centre of a media storm like this, you have to wonder what's happening with the soft communication processes within the team. And that's about making sure that your leaders are talking to the players around them, that there's a leadership group that is trusted by the players to set the boundaries and to set behaviours and to make people accountable to those behaviours. Liz, one of the biggest issues in sport is this element of independence and, and trying to find independence so that athletes do feel comfortable coming forward if they have allegations like this to be made. Is Sport Integrity Australia and the National Integrity Framework the answer to those questions? I think it's going to take a little while for us to see um, whether the current integrity framework is working, but I think it's a pretty good start. I think any time... Uh, you set something up like this, it has to be completely independent. And we just can't have be in a situation where sports are investigating themselves. Uh, that doesn't work and that athletes don't trust it. How would you rate the level of sports governance in Australian sport since your playing days? Oh, oh wow. That's a big question, isn't it? I've sat on the board of Sport Australia. I've sat on the board for, for many years and um, I think you know, the reforms that the chairman, when I was on the board, um, John Wiley, really pushed through were about improving governance in sport. And, you know, Australia, I think, has made some really good steps towards that. You know, there's a lot of things that need to be addressed. Sport is a fast evolving uh, economy. It's a massive part of the Australian economy and it's a fast evolving industry. So I think um, sports governance at the moment in Australia is pretty good. But I think every time we see something like this happen, it's a really good wake-up call to have a good investigation around what's happening and to make sure, OK, let's have a rigorous uh, investigation of it. Let's really examine what's happening and see where there needs to be changes made. Liz Ellis, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Tracy. That's all for the program. Thank you for your company. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>